Today, I'm joined by Regan Saville, Executive Director and CEO of Dragonfly Biosciences. Dragonfly is a vertically integrated seed to shelf CBD business that trades under the Dragonfly CBD brand. The company owns the entire value chain from their certified organic farms, extraction facilities, and state of the art labs used for producing premium CBD products. Dragonfly is planning to IPO on the ASX in early August. Today, I welcome Regan. Regan, welcome to the network. Thank you. Regan, can we start with telling us a little bit more about the Dragonfly CBD brand? So Dragonfly, we've been around for around six years now. We started in 2017 and we, were, we hit a few milestones early on. So we were the very first brand in C, uh, of CBD products in Boots, which is the, the national pharmacy chain in the UK. Um, they're brand is you know second only to the to the NHS so it's a really credible brand and a great achievement for us. Secondly we were the first kind of British company that developed a CBD extraction facility specifically for uh, extracting CBD on a large scale so that was another achievement back in 2020 and our FSA accreditation um, in the UK and our, our way that we've built our infrastructure of the company has led that we can also deliver compliance and transparency really easily. So in 2021, we achieved special access scheme approval for two of our products under the TGA, uh, from the TGA in Australia as well. So, you know, we are a credible seed to shelf manufacturing company for CBD products, but also predominantly on health and wellness. You know, we want to promote the health and wellness benefits of CBD and what it can bring for consumers. And just go, that accreditation, that is so important for a company like yourself. Getting that accreditation basically opens the doors and helps you, helps grow, yeah? Absolutely, yeah, it is so important because having the, the full seed to shelf manufacturing process, we can show that our soil is organically accredited. You know, we can show you our independent laboratory certificates that show you there are no contaminants in our product. You know, we, we believe in high quality at every step of our production process. So, you know, for example, our formulation is under EU GMP pharma grade for, uh, formulation. It's not required for a food supplement necessarily, but we believe to deliver the best quality product, that's what we want to do. And having that certification and that kind of quality at every stage helps with the compliance. So the FSA thing in the UK, all of the entire range of Dragonfly CBD product is on the public list of, of approved products for the UK. So that has helped us with the SAS, Special Access Scheme approval in, the, in Australia, and that will lead to FDA approval in the US as well as we, as we head towards full TGA approval in, in Australia. Regan, in respect to Dragonfly, can you give the viewers an idea on what you feel distinguishes the business from its competitors? We've been a market leader in the UK, and we want to be the market leader in new territories as well, where CBD regulation is clear and concise, and, and, and it's actually really easy to know what you can and can't do. So we're not operating in grey markets, we want to be absolutely compliant from day one. So, and that is a strength, you know, because that builds trust in, you know, for the consumer. There's a, it's, it's very important, you know, in, in our research that we've done, trust in the product that they're buying is really paramount. So obviously trust that they get the CBD they're buying, you know, there's some products out there that don't have the level of CBD that as advertised, so it's important they get that. It's important that they're getting a THC free product so the certification that we provide for every batch of product that we do shows that there's zero THC and they're getting the cannabinoids that they are actually acquiring. But also making sure that they are you know, trusting in, in the brand that Dragonfly show the, the providence and know where it's coming from. So we've not, we're not a company that buys CBD isolate and puts it in an oil and sells the product. We grow our own you know, and it's organic. You won't see that organic accreditation on many products because you need to grow your own in order to have that accreditation. <laughs> so, you know, that's very important to us and that distinguishes us from other, other brands, we feel. Do you have any numbers on what the global CPD market is currently worth and how it's projected to grow over the next few years? So there are, you know, some data out there for the CBD market. The global market for cannabidiol is going to be exceeding US dollars 47 billion by 2028. Now that is a phenomenal <laughs> number if you think about it, um, but it's predominantly, um, broken down with, with Asia and the US are the you know, two big markets on there. And what we're seeing is, you know, for Asia, th th they tend to look for, uh, to Australia and, you know, as for credible compliant products. So by virtue of Dragonfly being in Australia, we see that as a little bit of a beachhead into the Asian market. And our approach to the TGA approval process that we're going to do, you know, post IPO, 
will also help the FDA approval. We know that it's legal in certain states in the US, but it's obviously not federally legal at the moment. And we believe that will come. And us having the UK FSA approval, EU FSA approval, and the TGA approval will naturally lend itself to FDA approval as well. So that market in the US, which is also you know, a big number, is, is where we're heading. So Regan, you're already well positioned in the UK and the Asian markets. When do you expect to crack the US market? I would love to say tomorrow <laughs> or, or next month, but I think we've got a really good plan. Um, obviously, it's not federally legal at the moment, but you can do certain things in certain states, and there are certain non-consumable products that you can launch in the in the in the US, and also there are some you know health and wellness products that you can launch in the US, and um, that we're looking to do. So, I'm hoping you know our plan at the moment is to actually start building the Dragonfly CBD brand or Dragonfly Biosciences brand. In, in the US with maybe some non-CBD products first of all to get our brand being aware, you know, so it's awareness, builds that awareness in the US. And then we would hope that as the CBD becomes more accepted federally, we can then come in with our CBD products that are already developed and just waiting in the wings to go and really take advantage of that retail distribution that we've already achieved through the non-CBD side. Regan, let's get on to the listing. When is the expected listing date on the ASX? And can you share any details of, of the listing with us? Yes, so the listing is slated for about 1st of August, We're keeping our fingers crossed that that's going to be achieved. Um, hugely exciting time for Dragonfly you know, to be on the, on the ASX. You know, it's a great opportunity for many reasons, you know, you know, being, launching our products into Australia this year, um, following that, and obviously the, how that would lead into Asia and the US, you know, really big opportunities. So we're really excited. And just quickly, how much are you looking to, to, to raise? Is there a range or a fixed amount? Yes, sorry, there's a range. So uh, the 3 million is the minimum, 5 million is the maximum. We're predominantly going to be using that for sales and marketing and new product development. You know, the, the company is effectively built. You know, we've got all the infrastructure. We've got our land extraction facility, formulation, packaging, you know, our re retail distribution. We've got our licenses and all the, uh, you know, the re um, regulatory requirements are all in place and we're ready to go. It's just leveraging that now for future sales and marketing to build the revenue, not just for the new products, but also in new territories. Regan, let's talk about the, uh, the leadership team's experience and, and, the, and the makeup of your board. So currently the executive board is myself as a CEO. Um, then we have Rados Dragonova and Chris Ronsky. Now Rados and Chris are the two founders of the company originally. So Rados runs the cultivation and the formulation and some of the R&D in um, Sofia, in, in Bulgaria. So she's a key member of the operations team you know, and crucial to, that, to the running of that team. Chris is more on the investment side, has been you know, closely involved in building the company from the, and also having some ideas on where we're going with product development. So he's involved in that. On the non-exec side, we have Julian Karadoc, which is, um, he's a, a pharmacist and scientist, knows a lot about um, the CBD and the benefits that brings to consumers. And then we have Dale Klinert and Warren Goward, who are Australian non-exec directors, who are helping us on the capital markets. You know, they're very well experienced on that side of things. So we have a kind of split between operational and kind of non-exec and capital markets. In terms of experience and CBD, so in 2016, there wasn't a market, you know, there, there was no one, we couldn't, let's bring someone in who's got 10 years experience. There wasn't anyone that existed, actually. So there was some in the Canadian market, there was some ex expertise there, but even that had only been going a few years by that time. So a lot of it has been through tried and tested, kind of making mistakes for sure, um, but we've got to a really good knowledge base now and know-how over the last six years of building the company. So the experience has been born through hardship and <laughs> hard and craft, blood, sweat and tears, <laughs> as someone once said. Regan, all new companies uh, have risk for investors. What do you see as the major risks and, cha and challenges for, uh, for Dragonfly? So yes, naturally there are risks in any business, I guess, you know, regulatory risk in a cannabis related business is always high on the agenda. Um, but I just want to distinguish CBD from medicinal cannabis, because medicinal cannabis is obviously very highly regulated, regulated. it has to be, you know, it's a psychogenic, um, you know, it's a psychoactive compound. So, and there's a black market there. So, that, you know, there are strict protocols that need to be put in place for medicinal cannabis. And, uh, and admittedly, you know, that's quite, that's quite right. Whereas, you know, we're a health and wellness business. We're going over a completely different market. We're not necessarily for patients. We're here for the general public that want a health and wellness benefit from consuming CBD. 
but also it might be a topical, you know, it might be a skin patch, you know, it's not necessarily always already consumed CBD. So the risks that we have, um, you know, as is a natural product, um, there might be regulatory risks in certain markets, certain territories that might change their view on CBD. But what we're finding actually, this is relaxing, not hardening. So, you know, we've seen it in the UK, it's been in play since, you know, 2018, you can go into any pharmacy or supermarket and buy CBD off the shelf. And we're seeing, you know, Australia in February 21, when it down scheduled CBD, you can now get it on prescription. We, we see that going to retail eventually as well. And so there is a general relaxing of regulation. So actually you could say that is actually bettering, you know, the, the industry rather than betting against it. But it's always a risk and we have to you know, be aware of that. And to close things up today, um, if any of our viewers you know, want to participate in the IPO, how do they get involved? So the first place I would go is to the Phenexia website. So that's at phenexia.com.au forward slash dragonfly. There's all the details of the um, listing process is there and our prospectus is there to be downloaded. And there's some frequently asked ask questions on there as well if there's any, any, anything further they want to find out. And obviously, if you're hoping to list on the 1st of August, the book's closing in the, in the near future? Yes, July 20 is when we're hoping to close the books, and then there'll be a few days of administration, Yeah, but 1st of August is our planned date. Regan Savile, it's been an absolute pleasure, and we wish you all the best of luck, and we'll look forward to this no, thing, thank you. hopefully, very soon. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.